Well, good morning. Welcome back to my channel. We have cooked this delicious turkey bone broth. It's been cooking for a day and a half. Look at that nice, rich color. So now today we're going to do the, the canning. And how I'm going to do that, first I'm going to strain the solids out of here using this spider skimmer. And you can, as you can see, everything's pretty soft. I'm gonna let the liquid drain out because of course the liquid is what we want to can. And I'll strain all the solids into here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna search out some of the turkey to feed my dogs, or I could make myself a sandwich with turkey out of this soup if I wanted to. So this is gonna take a few minutes. Then once we have the solids removed from the broth, we're going to strain the broth one more time through the strainer into a large bowl. And you could further strain it one more time than that. You could also put it through some cheesecloth. Look how good that looks. Are you recording? Yeah. <laughs> All the goodies in here. The cartilage is all dissolved into the broth. Okay, we've gotten most all of the solids out of here. There's just a little bit of bits and pieces. At least eight pints of broth in here, I'm hoping, and possibly maybe even a ninth pint. My uh, jars are warming inside my canner. I've got nine pint jars. This is the um, the Presto 16 quart and it holds nine regular mouth pints or eight wide mouth pints. And I like to use the regular mouth pints for broth because I find it just pours a little easier out of a narrow mouth. I'm gonna move this a little closer to reduce my spillage. We're going to strain this one more time through another strainer here. And there won't be too much to strain, I don't believe, on this second pass. I was wishing I had another big stock pot to use for this part of the straining, but I just have a regular kitchen bowl. A stock pot would have been nice. But there's only room for so many pots in your kitchen. Now, if you missed my video yesterday on making the broth, it's just a real brief four minute video. I'll put a link up in the corner so you can watch that real brief video if you'd like to. Okay, I was running out of room in this bowl, so I had to, I had to use another container here. And this is the second pass of straining. Alrighty, so this step is optional. I did uh, clean the strainer out and I'm putting cheesecloth here. 
uh, it will help strain out particulate matter a little better so that the broth at the end is more clear. It's a little more aesthetically pleasing on the shelf and it doesn't have sludge on the bottom. And I'll still have a little bit of uh, debris on the bottom of my jars, but it won't be too much. And it doesn't hurt anything, that sludge. It's just purely aesthetics. So now I'm going to put these back into the original pot, strain it through cheesecloth, and then we'll be ready to jar it up. And sometimes the cheesecloth doesn't cooperate. So you can see just a little bit more debris that's collecting with the cheesecloth. Just a little extra step. So when your cheesecloth gets to where it doesn't want to drain because it's clogged up with the debris, you can just use a spoon to kind of clear the bottom. You could also pull your cheesecloth a little bit to uh, use an unused portion. See, look at all that debris we've got there. Alrighty, so we've strained all that broth through the cheesecloth. Everything looks pretty nice. We're going to rewarm this up and get our warmed jars out of the canner and get them filled. Here are the jars, waiting patiently in the canner. I think broth is one of my favorite items to have on hand, especially homemade broth. There's so many uses. You can use it to make rice, to make gravy, to make soups, stews. So much better than the store-bought, and you know exactly what's in it. So we've got, we have hot broth, so we want to put them into jars that are already warm. We want to avoid thermal shock. If you put hot broth into a cold jar, you could potentially have some cracking. You don't want your jars to crack and break, especially when you're trying to put up food. And for that same reason, you always put them on a uh, insulated surface, either wood, a cutting board, um, even just a cloth, a dish cloth, something like that. And I put water in the jars to prevent them from falling over in the canner. Okay, so we've got our jars ready to go. We have our ladle ready. We've got our funnel. So let's get to filling the jars. This is the fun part. You've done all this work, and now you get to Get to see the results of your work getting ready to be saved. These will last indefinitely on the shelf. I know the um, you want to leave about an inch of head space. I know the um, lid manufacturers tell you that their lids are good for 18 months and I think that's just sort of a rule of thumb. I don't think it's a hard and fast rule. I have of course use them and they've last longer than 18 months. My take on that is I think they're simply telling you that they don't guarantee the seal to last if you keep the jar or the food longer than a year or 18 months. But that's just my guess.
Nice looking broth. It takes about two of these big scoops to fill a pint jar. It takes about four to fill a quart jar. Okay, I think I'll skip ahead here so you don't have to watch me fill the remaining jars. I had enough to fill 10 pint jars, and I like pint jars for this broth because when I use it for gravy or rice or stuffing or whatever, uh, I don't want to have leftover to put in the refrigerator. I always end up tossing the leftover because I don't manage to use it up in time. And we still have a little bit left over, so I'm going to have soup for lunch. So yay! So next thing we're going to do is wipe the rims and put the lids on and we'll get these into the can. Okay, so you'll take a wet cloth. I just use a paper towel. You could use a, a dish cloth or something like that. And you wanna clean off the rims and the uh, threads where the lids screw on. You could also use vinegar to do this. If you have grease on the surface, it helps to cut the grease. I generally just use water. We're going to go around and do this to each and every jar. Okay, we've cleaned off the rims and the thread areas. Now we're going to put a lid. I use a new lid and your ring. Your ring can be new or used. As long as it's not too rusty, it'll be fine. Screw them on finger tight. You don't want them on too tightly. These jars are hot. All right, the jars are ready to go into the canner. They are warm. So we put warm jars into a warm canner. I've turned the heat on under the canner to kind of a medium high heat. kind of a little difficult to fit 10 in here. You have to kind of maneuver it. Number 10, it fits. Okay, so we've got the heat on, medium high. I'm gonna put the lid on the canner. Okay, so we've got the lid, we've lined up the arrows. Slide into place. We're going to make sure our vent is open and we look to make sure it was clear and also that our pop-up valve would pop up and that our um, silicone ring was in good condition and in place. So we're gonna wait until we see steam coming up through here. We're gonna let that vent for 10 minutes after that happens. Then we'll put our weight on. 
<clears throat> and for my elevation, I use a 10 pound weight. And then we'll bring the temperature up inside the canner or the pressure will come up. Once the uh, weight starts to rock, we'll time this for 30 minutes because we have pints. If it was quartz, it would be 35 minutes. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. And we've got a strong plume of steam coming up through the vent here. So I'm gonna set my timer for 10 minutes. And once the timer is up, we'll put the weight on. Meanwhile, while I was doing that, I'm separating the chunks of meat from the bone and the debris that I'm gonna throw away. And there's quite a bit of meat here for the dogs and to add to my soup for lunch. So yay. Okay, so our 10 minute venting is up. It's been steaming like that for 10 minutes. So I'm going to put my 10 pound weight. The uh, valve has already popped up before I put my weight on. It doesn't matter if this pops up before or after you put the weight. It kind of does its own thing, I found. So now we're going to wait until uh, this starts rocking. And once it starts rocking, I'm going to follow the uh, timing for vegetable broth, which is 30 minutes for pints. If you're following the directions by the National Center for Home Food Preservation for just beef broth or chicken broth or poultry broth, you only have to, uh, the processing time is only 20 minutes for pints and 25 minutes for quarts. But because I put vegetables in my broth, I just, I feel a little more comfortable going for the 30 minutes. So once this starts to rock, we'll time it for 30 minutes. Okay, the weight is rocking and I've set my timer for 30 minutes. So it needs to rock continuously like this. All right, the weight has been rocking for about 30 minutes. I have four, three, two, one. Okay, my time is up. I'm going to turn off the heat. And I'm going to just let this sit and it is going to slowly cool down. It'll take at least an hour. The weight will start rocking pretty quickly here. And we will just let this sit because you don't want sudden changes in temperature. That's what makes your, um, that's what makes your product boil out of the jar and cause siphonage. And we don't want to have any siphonage. So patience is the key. Okay, it's been about an hour or so. The pin has dropped, indicating that the pressure is down in the canner. I'm going to remove the weight. And I'm going to crack this just a little bit and wait another couple minutes. And then we'll come back and unload the canner. This is just another method of uh, letting the cool down process be slow. Okay, so let's get these out of the canner. And it's not uncommon with broth to have the lids pinging up and down and up and down as it's in the cooling process. Kind of a little musical note when they do that. Everything looks good. I don't have any siphonage that I can see. And here's number 10. So we've got 10 jars of beautiful broth. We're gonna let these cool down. So we've got a little bit of bubbling going on in the jars, which is a good sign. We're gonna let them slowly cool off here. And then once they're cool, we're going to remove the rings. Uh, make sure the seal is good on all the jars. We'll wash the jars. 
we'll label them with the date and the product and then we'll be finished. We'll have beautiful broth that we can use for soups, stews, gravies, making rice if you want to, anything like that. Really useful to have on hand. Okay, take care and have a real good rest of the day.